Hello, it's Melissa Sweet here from Croaky Health Media. We're speaking with Chris Bowen, Shadow Minister for Health. And Chris, you're announcing something tomorrow around climate and health. Can you please tell us about that? Well, I think it's justified to have a national health priority area about climate change and health. Climate change is going to have big health impacts. Of course, we need to get climate change policy right, but also we need to prepare the health system for more intense um, natural disasters, for vector-borne diseases, for more heat waves. Um, this has got the potential to have a huge impact on the health outcomes of Australians and we need as collective governments, state and federal, to be doing more to prepare. We've been hearing about the health impacts of climate change for decades that I can remember. Why haven't we got a national policy now or a national plan? Well, I don't want to be too sort of partisan, but you know, the fact of the matter is this, there's plenty of people in this current government who don't believe that climate change is real. And for those who do believe that climate change is real, they're constrained because their colleagues hold them back, whether that's the case when it comes to energy policy or indeed climate change and health policy. Uh, we don't have that problem on my side of politics. And if, if COAG were to declare climate and health a national health priority, what difference would that make? Well, it then provides a mechanism for uh, state and federal ministers to work together to commission work on what needs to be done to bring the health system um, make the health system fit for purpose with a, a rapidly changing environment, uh, enable stakeholders, experts to provide feedback through that process. Um, national health policy areas, priority areas, are um, a well-established mechanism. There's, there's uh, nine existing attempts proposed. Um, they're all justified. They've been around for a couple of decades. They're a good way of putting important things on the national health agenda. So you can't do that in your current position. It Alas, would have not. to be um, Minister Greg Hunter. Only the minister, that. only the federal minister can do it. Um, but I'm calling on him to do it. Uh, I hope he does do it. Uh, and if he doesn't do it, uh, I will do it if I become health minister at the next election. And for croaky uh, readers and followers, how can they um, engage with this advocacy and action? Well, What's your I mean, message to them. Yeah, well, keep it up. I mean, uh, I've been. Uh, surprised by the number of clinicians who've raised uh, climate change and health with me in my time as Shadow Health Minister. Um, but it's also down to advocates and activists as well. I mean, um, it's, it, you know, I'm pleased to be putting it on the agenda myself, but I'm doing so on the back of work of uh, many activists and advocates and uh, you know, keep it up and, and keep uh, putting the pressure on the current government to get it on the agenda. So on Thursday, um, emergency medicine doctors attending their annual mm. scientific summit in uh, Nipaluna Hobart are going to march through the streets. Mm. What, what do you say to them? Well, good on them. Good on them. I mean, you know, whatever it takes to get issues on the agenda is, I think, uh, justified, uh, particularly emergency doctors who are, you know, fine individuals doing great work right across the country. They're more than entitled to peaceful protest to get issues on the agenda. And, you know, I support that. And indeed, I'm in my own way, putting it on the agenda on Wednesday night in my speech. We're talking on a day in Sydney that is, you know, mm. filled with bushfire smoke haze. It'll be putting people in hospitals and ambulances. Mm. Do you have any personal reflections to share when you think about your own health or the health of your family and friends about what climate change means? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I was driving my kids this morning through the thick haze of thick smoke in Western Sydney and thinking, you know, is this what it's come to? I mean, you know, yes, Bushfires have been with us forever. Of course, that's I mean, think it's, it's 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 a truism. Um, but they're getting worse. They're getting longer, and we're seeing the sort of impacts that we're seeing today. Um, so you know, it's perfectly appropriate to to say, well, climate change is making this worse. Unless we have holistic approaches from energy policy, climate change policy, through to health policy to deal with it, um, it's just going to keep happening more and more. I guess that brings up another. Um question around health policy, you know, a lot of people feel that to achieve real gains in health, we need health in all policies, mm. you know. Mm. What's your view on health in all policies? Oh, look, I think it's a, it's a very worthy suggestion. It's, um, I've looked at, you know, South Australia, and I've spoken to people like Fran Baum about health in all policies, and, and I understand the principle, and, you know, certainly uh, it continues to reflect in my thinking about where I take the health portfolio going forward. So if you were Health Minister, how could you advance health in all policies? Well, that's something I continue to think about, and... Mm. Um, and to uh, you know, work on. Um, uh, I'm at least two years away in all certainty from becoming health minister uh, if we did win the next election. So I've got some time to work that up a little bit further, but I'm attracted to the concept. Great. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I think we've covered it, um, but I'm glad to be able to get, get climate change and health and the interaction more on the agenda, hopefully, in my speech tomorrow. Thank you very much.